So a lot of times people reach out to us and they're challenged with finding an electric bike. And one of the common challenges people have is if they're a little bit shorter in height, they might have some challenges finding a bike that might fit them specifically. And today I'm gonna to talk about how to find a bike that will fit you well, specifically if you're shorter, and some of the challenges you might encounter, how to overcome them. Now there's some bikes that are made specifically to accommodate riders that are shorter in height, but uh, you know, some bikes, it's just not possible. I mean, when I first started this business, many bikes were only available in one size, and it was usually like a medium or large or somewhere in between. So we'd have to find all sorts of adaptations to kind of make the bike fit the specific rider height. A lot of times we didn't have bikes with the low step as we see now, you know, most of them were just the standard frame, and that could be really challenging if you have a short inseam and you have to deal with what's called a standover height. So I'm gonna talk about some of these different things and how you might encounter them and how to you know, find a bike that's gonna fit you well, you'll feel comfortable on it, and as a result, you'll feel safe. And hopefully, as a result of that, you'll ride more. You know, as I just talked about a standard frame and I talked about standover height, standover height is when you're standing over the bike, not on the saddle, and it's the clearance between your crotch and the, and the top tube. Generally speaking, you wanna have some, some clearance there. That's really helpful if you're hopping off the seat really quickly, say in an emergency situation, and you have to hop off the seat, you wanna have clearance so you don't hurt yourself. This is something that a lot of times people have challenges with, including myself. I mean, I'm five foot nine, and I have a 30 and a half inch inseam. That's on the shorter side for somebody of my height. I've seen people that are five foot nine and 32 inch inseam. And with the 32 inch inseam, you have a lot more flexibility with what sort of standover height you might be able to work with. Some bikes have what's called a low step. That's really helpful for this situation because a low step, there is no top tube. And the standover height is very low, but still at the same time, that's not necessarily gonna be all that you need if you're a shorter rider. And, and I should specify, when I'm talking about a shorter rider, I'm talking about somebody specifically like under five foot six, maybe like five four and below. Uh, but some of the most challenging riders to fit are around five foot or maybe even just slightly below that. But I'll talk about, you know, what bikes might fit you better than some of the other bikes. So I talked a little bit about frame style, but really one of the most important details is frame size. For a shorter rider, you're gonna generally want to frame, say, under 18 inches, something maybe more like 16 inches or so might be ideal. But many bikes, they, they don't have these sizes. So, uh, and as I said before, you know, when, a, when I first started working with electric bikes, many of them were just in one size. But now as the market's growing, it's easier for manufacturers to make more sizes of bikes and we're starting to see that more and more but there still are many manufacturers that just start at a they might call it a small but it might be more like a medium i mean i would consider a small something that a rider from five foot five two to five four five six would be able to fit but if it doesn't fit that size i i don't know is it really still considered a small should it be considered extra small yeah, it's tough to say this measurement for the frame size is really important because that's going to be really relevant to that inseam measurement what i was talking before the way that i generally measure inseam is from your crotch to the bottom of the floor i measure it without shoes on and that way you can have a baseline of what that is i think for the most part if you have a 30 inch inseam or above there you're going to have a lot more flexibility on which bikes will fit you but under 30 inches, it's gonna be more challenging. It's difficult to get to exactly say like what frame size you want or what you need because there's different frames, there's different angles to the seat tubes and all these things come into play. So these are some of the measurements that you wanna really take into account when you're considering choosing a bike. I mean, really everybody should be considering these things, but uh, if you're a shorter rider, you might wanna be particularly focused on this because there's a lot of the bikes might have that taller standover height. You know, if you're like myself, you have a 30 and a half inch inseam and the standover height is 33 inches, even with shoes, I, you know, I'm gonna add an inch and a half or so with the sole of my shoe, I'm still not gonna get to that 33 inches. I mean, sure, I could ride the bike and many times I will choose to ride a bike that has that taller standover height and oftentimes somebody might choose to purchase a bike that has that taller standover height 
but you're making a slight compromise in doing so, and it's something really to, to consider. So with your inseam measurement, you can make a better determination of what standover height you need or what you might be comfortable with. I mean, for me, I'm generally comfortable with another couple inches above what my actual inseam height is. If you're riding a really rough terrain, like mountain biking, that sort of thing, you might want to just make sure you have a little bit more clearance because there might be a higher probability that you have to hop over that seat really quickly and end up on the top tube. So having that clearance will just make the bike a little bit safer. But at the same time, some people don't really have that option. You really have that bike that you want. It doesn't meet the standover height exactly right. But there's other things you can do. One of the things that we often do is opt to include a dropper seat post. The dropper seat post is generally hydraulic and what it does is it allows the seat post to drop down with the push of a button. And they're generally used for mountain biking. So when you're riding in really rough terrain, you'll drop that seat post down, get it out of your way. And so that way, if you have to put your feet down on the ground really quickly, you'll have plenty of clearance to do so. You'll be able to put your feet flat on the ground because quite often your appropriate seat height might be in a place that you're not able to put your feet flat on the ground when you stop. You might be able to put them closer to flat on the ground if you lean the bike over a little bit, but in your normal position, you might find that challenging. A lot of electric bikes have suspension seat posts. Those suspension seat posts are great, but the challenge is they might impact your ability to put the seat down as low as you might want it to go. So what we do find that sometimes people take a bike that has a suspension seat post and actually remove the suspension seat post to allow the seat to go down to a lower position to better accommodate their specific needs. And there's actually a dropper seat post that also has suspension in it. And I think this is a really great option if you're in that position where you can't really get the seat post all the way down and accommodate the suspension. But if you use a dropper seat post, you might find that when you drop it down, you're able to get your feet relatively flat. And this might also be good for people, even if you're not shorter, you just feel like you want that extra stability to be able to put your feet down when you're stopped. But you also want to be able to get the saddle to the appropriate height as you're going and get some of that suspension. So that, that seat post is called the PNW Coast. So we talked about frame style and frame sizes and that sort of thing. But I think one thing that really impacts a lot of this is actually the size of the wheels on the bike. Now, we've seen bikes as small as 12 inches, 16 inches. Most of the bikes we sell start at 20 inches. But having a 20 inch wheel generally is gonna bring the overall size of the bike down and it allows for a lot more flexibility in rider height. So one of the manufacturers we work with is called Turn. They have several models. They have the Vectron, the HSD, the GSD. All these bikes can accommodate riders of starting around four foot 11. But the cool thing about it is they can start at four 11, but they can go upwards to six foot five because of this adjustability and the way that the frame is set up. So they have a, a really short seat tube and they're able to do this a little bit easier with those smaller wheels. There's some other bikes that I think work really well for shorter riders that have smaller wheels as well. One of them is called the Risa Mueller Tinker. So this is one of those bikes you really kind of have to be mindful of. It has a suspension seat post and actually the default length of the seat post won't allow the seat post to go all the way down. So if you want the seat post to go down further, sometimes we actually have to cut it. And this is the case with many bikes. So it's something to be mindful of. You might find that the seat's not going down all the way. The seat tube only has so much length to it. And if you wanted to get it down lower, you have to have the seat post cut. But in the case of the Tinker, if you were to opt for the suspension seat post and you wanted that seat to go down lower, you might find that you want to go with the non-suspension seat post to get it down to that lower position. Some other bikes that fit really well have similarly small wheels. One of them is called the Risa Mueller Nevo. Now that bike in the small size, the 43 centimeter, which is the smallest size out of all their bikes, aside from the Tinker at least, that has 26 inch wheels as opposed to the standard 27 and a half inch wheels. Those 26 inch wheels allow the bike to be 
a little bit lower, allow them to make the frame a little bit smaller so that seat post can go down a little bit lower. And we find that bike really easily accommodates riders around five foot to five foot six or somewhere in that area. So if you are a shorter rider looking for more of a full size bike, that's a really great option. I should also mention that a lot of cargo bikes do a great job of accommodating shorter riders. Many times when you choose a cargo bike, you might end up sharing it between a couple different family members. And so maybe it's a, a husband or wife or different partnerships and, uh, or friends that, that are sharing the bike. Somebody could be five foot tall and then uh, another person could be six foot tall. And most of the bikes will accommodate these different rider sizes because making a cargo bike, it's kind of complex to make the frame. And the idea of making several different frame sizes for this very complex bike, I think that the market's just not really there yet. I mean, maybe that will happen eventually. But I found that it's not really necessary. I mean, mo most of the bikes are built strong enough to be able to accommodate different rider heights, even with those different frame sizes. Now, one of the things I didn't talk about, and I'm talking about the seat tube, is the reach of the bike. And that's how far out the handlebars are. This is gonna be impacted by the size of the frame. You could think of it like a triangle, right? So you have the, the seat tube here, and you have the reach here, and then you have the down tube here. If you change some of these angles, it will change the reach of the bike and, and change the seat tube and that sort of thing. So something to consider, really important. Now, having a bike that has a, a further reach, it might put you in a more forward position. A lot of times with people, with, when they opt for electric bikes, they wanna sit a bit more upright. So you don't want that reach to be that far out. So having a bike with a shorter reach is really ideal. This can get challenging when some of the bikes choose to opt for integrated batteries. A lot of times the, the integrated batteries, they are very specific size. So having that one side of the triangle longer, that down tube, it might make it challenging to have a shorter reach. So that's, uh, that's something to consider in the design considerations and the engineering of these frames. So you can generally uh, adapt the reach in some ways by using different handlebars or different stems. A lot of times people will put a shorter stem on the bike. That's what the handlebars are attached to, by the way. To put a shorter stem or a stem that has an angle to it and it's angling the bars closer to you this will impact your reach so if you have that further reach and you're sitting in that forward position if you angle the stem back a little bit you can sit a little bit more upright if you have handlebars that are swept back a little bit that'll pull you back as well so i think what you might gather from this is that there's many things that can be adapted to make the bike accommodate a shorter rider better but there's certain things that can't be adapted. I mean, one of those things is wheel size, not so easy to change. I mean, technically it's possible. You might have a bike that has 29 inch wheels and you can go to 27 and a half or 26, but sometimes the, uh, you know, specifically if the motor system is made to work with that certain size wheel or the frame is made to work with that certain size wheel, it can have certain effects. And I generally steer away from that, but changing things like seat post, handlebar, stem, that could be a really good way to go to make the bike fit a little bit better. But the size of the frame, you can't really change that so much. I mean, you have the fixed size of the seat tube, you have the fixed reach, but you know, you can use a different size seat post, different size stem, handlebars, that sort of thing. But if you're struggling, you know, to find a bike that fits you right, even if, you know, going through the list of bikes that we have and that sort of thing, reach out to us. I mean, I'm always happy to help. It's something that we deal with all the time and I'm always looking for different bikes that are gonna fit shorter riders better because I know that this is part of the market that is really not that developed yet. I mean, there's many bikes that do fit shorter riders well. You know, I mentioned some of them, you know, the Turn Bikes, the Tinker, the Risa Mueller Nevo, to name a few, and really a lot of the cargo bikes as well. But there's always more being added to that list and I'm always working on developing that as well. So. I'd love to hear from you if you have a bike that fits you really well and you're on the shorter side, because I think a lot of other people would like to know that also. But if you have any questions, comments, you know, just leave them below uh, or reach out and always happy to help. And I look forward to seeing you in a future video. All right, well, see you soon.